Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Taking Jeff Goldblum to Life Aquatic. Willem Dafoe to Aquaman. Nicole Kidman to Dead Call. Sam Neill, Hunt for Red October. James Earl Jones to the Swashbuckler. Finally, Robert Shaw, Jaws. Just when you thought it was safe to say that you thought it was safe to go back in the water. Tom, Josh, Dan, dive into six films, anchored by six different actors, swimming us all the way to the summer blockbuster that birth. Summer Blockbusters. Jaws. Six films, six actors, six weeks, three guys, one podcast. The Fire Pivot. It's going to be a Jaws dropping summer trip. How long has it been since you've seen this kind of adventure? How long has it been since you've seen this kind of action? How long has it been since you've had this much fun? How long has it been since you've seen a swashbuckler? Now, Universal presents the biggest, grandest pirate film of all time. Starring Robert Shaw. There is she is, my friend! James Earl Jones, Jean-Vierre Bougeau, Peter Boyle, Jeffrey Holder, and Bo Bridges. I'll see you hang, legends! <laughs> swashbuckler. What could be more exciting? What could be more romantic? What could be more fun? Come and enjoy the biggest, grandest pirate adventure of all time. Swashbuckler. Good evening, and welcome to the Fire Pit Podcast. I'm your host and captain for the evening, Sean Connery. And tonight, we're watching Hunt for the Red October. Uh, Mr. Connery, we're glad you joined us this week, but we watched that last week. Say again now, son? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, last week's film. This week we're watching Swashbuckler. Ah, you should watch Hunt for Red October again. Fantastic picture. Uh, oh, we, we know it's really good. It's uh, And it was a good movie. We enjoyed it. It's just we, we kind of have a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, we, as much as we love to watch a great movie twice, yeah, that, yeah, it's uh, our gimmick. It's a gimmick. Yeah, it's a gimmick. Thank you. Yes. It's like Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Ah, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Fine actor, but he's no Sean Connery. No, he he's not. But I'm a knight, you know. We we know you are, sir. Knighted but... by the queen herself. Uh, yes, but uh, we're trying to get to Jaws, and and yeah, we're watching this movie so we can follow Robert Shaw to Jaws. So you have ah, to. Ah, <laughs> yes, Robbie Shaw. You know we were in a picture together. Yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah, uh, from Russia with love. I played James Bond. Yeah, we we know. I just said that. Wonderful picture. We should watch that one. It doesn't really quite fit the theme, though. What uh, theme is this? Uh, kind of an aquatic theme. I think we called it uh, Stay Out of the Water or something like that. Yeah, it's got, like, oceans and stuff. Yeah, I, I kind of picked it. Um, it was one of my movies we went with. Kind of no, proud of that, actually. Uh, there's water in my picture. I think a boat chase doesn't really count. Well, you could make it fit. Just, you know, jam it in there. <laughs> I suppose we could jam it in. But Fine. no. It's decided, then. Uh, yeah, um, I... Okay. All right, I guess I'll get it started. From my list. One moment, boys. And that's my obligation. <laughs> Enjoy the picture, gentlemen. Wait, 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 what just happened? Uh, Mr. Connery? Hello? Uh, Hello? Uh, well, that well, was definitely that... a thing that happened. <laughs> that was... Hello, bots and <laughs> listeners! <laughs> Welcome back! Back to the fire pit. I'm Tom, British name Thompson, and tonight we l look for adventure not on a telephone call with Sean Connery, but on the high seas. After spending last week finding more than enough adventure under the sea with nuclear subs and Russian Sean Connery, we move on to the age of sail. Whoosh 
we're getting sauced on rum as the sink or swim supper tour sails on. Try saying that 17 times fast. As per the rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved on to the next film. And to tell us about what we're watching and who we're watching and where and why we're watching it, I turn it over to Reginald, who's going to tell us what Tom Clancy movie we're watching tonight. Tom? Yes. Not that Tom Clancy. Check again. This is your list. Josh, I know. I know what list is. I know what I'm doing. I'm just... I mean, it's not like there's an actor who's also named Tom Clancy. I mean, what would be the chances of that? <clears throat> Tell us what we're watching, Reginald. <laughs> Thank you, Thompson. Uh, Reginald here, uh, American name Josh. And uh, last week, we followed Sam Neill from Dead Calm and watched him actually have something to do. Not in the movie, but actually act in Hunt for Red October. Not Hunt for the Red October. I don't know if that joke has ever caught on, but uh, I'm going to keep saying it. But... <laughs> Well, he didn't get a chance to see Montana. We're all sad about that. The three of us got to watch an amazing film. Like, I think all three of us can agree that Hunt for Red October was awesome. Uh, one of the best we've seen, yeah. Yeah, definitely the highlight of the uh, Sink or Swim summer tour. But tonight, uh, we get to follow Tom Clancy and move on to Swashbuckler. Josh. <laughs> yes, Stan? Wrong Tom Clancy. That's not who we're following. Check your notes again. Oh, I am going to check it right now. Tonight, we follow James Earl Jones and move to Swashbuckler, a 1976 film starring the aforementioned Darth Mufasa, Robert Shaw, Peter Boyle, and Angelica Houston. To give us more of a rundown, you know, on this film, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Dan. <sighs> Thank you, Josh. As always, I'm Dan, British name Nigel. And as mentioned, yeah, tonight we're going to watch Tom Clancy's Swashbuckler. And uh, uh, here's Dan, some... Dan. What? Wrong, Tom Clancy. Look at it again. I think I know my facts when I do the rundown on this podcast, Tom. Okay? You know what? I am going to look it up. I'm going to go ahead and Google it right now. And just... oh, thank you, Josh. I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and tonight we're watching 1976's Swashbuckler, a rather under-the-radar film, a movie that, uh, like Dead Calm, all three of us hadn't heard of until we started on this journey. It was released on July 29th, 1976. It uh, had a budget of about $8 million, which is about $40 million in today's money, and it was a colossal failure. I couldn't find a whole lot on the numbers for this movie. I finally found some numbers, and we're talking like uh, page five of a Google search kind of numbers. It made about $100,000 in its theatrical run. Jeez. Dude, yeah. Even in 1976 money, that is bad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, again, it cost $40 million dollars. In 1975, 76 dollars. I the best number I could find was maybe a hundred, maybe two, if we're being generous in its run. That's still well short of the mark. Um, there's a reason we've never heard of it. If you count the studio giving syndication rights, video, DVD, if you can even manage to find a copy, uh, it still hasn't recouped its losses. And uh, it's actually uh, a noticeable trend in Hollywood that uh, pirate movies tend to fail. Spectacularly. In fact, uh, you could say they sink. Uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. Nice. Very clever, very clever, Dan. I do. I have my moments. But yeah, it was actually a trend until the first Pirates of the Caribbean film, where the pirate movies, the, that one made a lot of money, obviously. We, we all know how popular those movies are. However, those movies are the only ones that are, like knockoff Pirates of the Caribbean type films still tend to flop in Hollywood today. Hollywood still tends to shy away from pirate films. Muppet Treasure Island and Goonies are also big pirate films that made money, but they're not considered traditional pirate films. So, What about that one Tom Hanks movie? Did that pirate film that he did uh that's a different type of pirate um and uh, yeah but it made money um <laughs> but yeah, or i'm talking like movies like pirates in 1986 <laughs> yellow bird you guys are awful you guys are awful i honestly forgot that film had pirates in it <laughs> technically he's right it's a pirate film it just came to me i'm sorry <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I was just saying that it, we're, I'm talking like movies like Pirates in 1986, Yellowbeard in 1983, Swashbuckler, the movie we're watching tonight, Savage Islands, Pirate Movie, Cutthroat Island in 1995. These movies are all bombs. Like, they're all bombs. Like, in Hollywood to this day still tends to, like, when somebody pitches a pirate movie script, uh, they're still kind of like, e well, they all fall under the same trap, actually, that uh, a really famous commercial and financial flop, Waterworld, the um, 
Kevin Costner. Kevin, yeah, the Kevin Costner film Waterworld was a big flop for the same reason these pirate movies are flops. Filming on water is expensive, and pirate movies tend to want to be filmed on water for obvious reasons. Especially if you're trying to make a pirate film where you got to recreate the boats and the ships and the costumes from that era. Not to mention you got to blow up the boats at a certain point of time. So it's like, mm, if we didn't get a shot, we got to put things back together. Yeah, and that plus... was skyrocketed the cost of uh, Waterworld. It's like one of the sets, the one, uh, the Waterworld thing actually sank. So they had to rebuild the entire thing to film like three scenes. Yeah, well, not just that, a, a hurricane or something also blew through the area and sunk the set. So they had to um, uh, salvage what they could and rebuild the rest. And the, the set, I guess, already cost a couple million dollars to build in the first place, and it cost a couple more million to uh, repair it and rebuild it. So The sea does not care at no, all. It does, that's another reason why filming on water is expensive, because obviously the closer you get to the coast and the more out to sea you are, the less predictable the weather can get. And uh, it can be nice and sunny one minute and then boom, hurricane. It's not fun. So that's why these movies tend to be expensive. That's also why Hollywood tends to shy away from them. They probably do a little bit better now because they can use CG and uh, sound stages and stuff like that to get water effects in. So it might be a little bit better. But again, the Pirates of the Caribbean films are really still the only ones that kind of make money. And the rest don't. It is kind of like a curse. And that's interesting about this film, too, because I'm also looking up. This was... They put some weight into this film. I mean, this was a big, like, star-studded cast. I, I know you guys probably haven't seen the trailer, but I edit in trailers for these episodes, and they hype this film up. And all of these people here, they either were names or were known i mean just i had to look back at some of these robert shaw um not just robert shaw excuse me but peter boyle he actually we know him from young frankenstein but before this he was in some pretty well received dark political comedies like he was in taxi driver he was in a film called joe about a serial killer um the virgin president about nuking manhattan um James Earl Jones. Yeah, he's the big one. Yeah, his his pedigree was pretty nice. I mean, The Great White Hope, which black heavyweight in an interracial marriage, The Man, which is a film that stars the first black president. Yeah, they put a lot of weight into making mm -hmm. what was ostensibly watching the trailer a nostalgia throwback film to swashbuckers from the 1950s they wanted to get our grandparents in those seats like come watch a pirate film you haven't watched one since you were a kid didn't quite hit the mark unfortunately yeah because weren't pirate films very popular in the 50s like with the uh, disney's treasure island and whatnot yeah i mean into the 30s and 40s you had films you had guys like errol flynn just pirate films were kind of the thing, but much like Nigel noted, a reason why Hollywood eventually started to go away from those was because they were so freaking expensive and risky to make. Yeah, you got to remember, this is also 1976, so this is one year before Star Wars. Yep. This is this is one year before Star Wars. This is one year after Jaws. So blockbusters at the time were still primarily Westerns because Westerns were cheap to make. They already had the sets. They recycled a lot of the costumes, the props. Hell, even the actors kind of all starred in the same type of Western movie. So they shied away from these pirate films because they didn't get it. Even if it was a hit, it didn't, they didn't get a whole lot of return on their investment. So they started to shy away from these, like Tom said. And then once Star Wars hits the year after this movie comes out, the focus shifts from westerns to uh, di uh different types of blockbusters lots of space operas and shit like that things that can be filmed on sets on land away from water and hurricanes and sharks and all the things that would make it challenging oh, yeah because what was it gina davis's cutthroat island that was a massive flop and it was hugely expensive that was a 95 movie major flop major flop. I remember reading about that. My wife's very nostalgic about that movie, but she tries. she's tried multiple times in the course of our marriage to sit me down and watch it with her. I fall asleep like five minutes in, but I'm not the hugest Gina Davis fan. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that movie just like, it's pretty. The sets are nice. 
I think that there's something of a plot there, but it is just boring. <laughs> I think it's because, with the exception of Pirates of the Caribbean, they all follow those pirate swashbuckler film tropes yeah. so closely. It's painful. It's like, yeah. I've seen this. I've seen this a million times. Why do I need to see it a million and one times? Yeah, I, that's. I think that's why Pirates of the Caribbean was such a big hit is because it merged pirate tropes with maybe, I guess it's not really a horror movie, but I guess horror movie tropes because of the cursed pirates and the cursed ship. And mm. so they, they had the, the immortal crew that turned into skeletons in the moonlight. And yeah. Uh, so it, it, it kind of mixed horror and, and pirate tropes together. I think that's why it was a little bit more of a success than say cutthroat Island, which was a standard pirate film. See, um, I would, uh, just just to be a dissenting voice in that that argument, I would argue that Johnny Depp had more to do with that movie being a success than the actual storyline. Like, the storyline was solid. I'm not going to disagree with you there. But I honestly think that it was uh, Jack Sparrow that, that really stood out and brought that uh, above the rest. Mm, That's in he, my opinion. Yeah, and, and I, I think evidence proves that because, yeah, he was not your bog standard lead character pirate. He wasn't Yarb and I've asked me Hardys. He was to overuse the phrase a splash of fresh water <laughs> that was just bad i, I could taste you it could do coming so out so much better i you know it's been a long week josh <laughs> it's the best i got right now <laughs> but yeah it's just he was so unique he was a marx brother character everyone else is playing it straight to the tropes and the cliches and he was just doing his own thing and having fun at their expense. And it was great until they did it 15 more times. That's a rant for another time. Yeah. When we get to those movies, we will continue that rant. So stick yeah, with us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we start the movie, just non pirate trivia. I, I found on the internet that I thought this was kind of cool. It is amazing. He wasn't here to hear this. I was going to tell him, but he left, but um, Sean Connery left before I could tell him this, but this film features three actors who've appeared as villains in the James Bond film franchise. I thought that was kind of neat. Robert Shaw plays Donald Grant from Russia with Love. That's the most famous one. Jeffrey Holder plays Baron Samadhi in Live and Let Die. And Roger Cudney played the captain of the Wavecrest in License to Kill. I thought that was kind of cool that this movie features three Bond villains. And if you count Donald or if you count Robert Shaw... And Sean, or not Sean Connery, if you count Robert Shaw and James Earl Jones as Darth Vader, this movie features two of the most iconic villains in film franchise. Or in film history, I should say, film fr f film history. Donald Grant is probably the most iconic villain from James Bond, with the exception of Blofeld and Jaws. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Darth Vader, That I mean, that's that speaks for itself. You know, I honestly, I, I would argue that point, that the most iconic villain in... Uh... James Bond has got to be odd job. I'm just solely say that as uh, my experience playing Goldeneye back in 1996. <laughs> That's because nope. odd job was forbidden. And if you were using odd job, you were a troll. <laughs> <laughs> we kick you out of the house. You banished. Slappers only. No odd job. Only you 30 bring... odd people or 30 year old people will get that joke. Like we just lost our 12 year old demographic right there. Are they the ones who are uh, listening to the show from France? Yes. Bonjour. Bobbity boopity. No, that's Bobby. Italian, Josh. So, Nigel, I believe you had some other trivia for us today. Am I right I, in that? I do. I do. And if you give me just a second. Beautiful I, segue, by the way, Tom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm on such a roll this week, guys. You have no idea. <laughs> for tonight's test, I'm going to read the title of a review on IMDb, and I want you guys to tell me uh, how much out of 10 do you think this person gave it? Okay. Uh, I like this. Okay. I'm just going to read the time. I'm not going to read the actual review. I'm just going to read the title. Okay. Not a great movie, but a fun one. Ooh. Tom, you want to take it? Oh, not a great film, but a fun one. That sounds like a, that sounds like a four. I'm giving that a four. You know, if we're playing The Price is Right, I would give it a five because I know he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I will go with uh, an eight. Good job, Josh. It is an eight out of ten on the money. <laughs> on the money, that was an eight out of ten. Wait a minute, did you? You're not looking it up, are you? No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. All right. What a wet blanket. 
Oh, that's such a bad pun. Reginald, you get this one. Um, I'm going to go 5 out of 10. Uh, I've got to go 4 out of 10. Good job. Wow, you guys are on the money tonight. Tom, Tom you're, you're right on. 4 out of 10. Good job. Oh, no shit. Boom, baby. Yeah, Tight four. score. No, as I said it, I'm like, I kind of wish I would have said a 2, but I would have been wrong either way. <laughs> okay. Sword play, cannon fire, white sails in the sunset. And banana peels. Why don't you give it Ooh, at the same time? On. No, you go first. Your turn. Ten. You think it's nine. a ten out of ten? I'm going to go nine. And Tom, you said ten? Yes. Uh, well, I guess the streak couldn't last forever. Uh, that's a five out of ten, so it's a uh, middle oh, of the road God. review. So. Damn. <laughs> right. Okay. I mean, I mean. I get more points. I get at least half a point because I got closer, right? Price is right rules. Uh, sure. We'll go with that. <laughs> and the last one is... Hold on, crap, I just had it. I accidentally scrolled off, off of it, and now I can't find... Oh, here he is. Okay, and the last one, possibly the most misguided movie ever made. Hard to believe this film actually has admirers. <laughs> ten. Absolutely a ten. And by ten, <laughs> I mean a one. <laughs> I want to go with one, two. Yeah, it's 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 one. Is, it's a one out of ten. <laughs> If you want to attend. However, if you read the review, it's not as bad as the title would seem like. It actually seems like I think he personally enjoyed it, but he understands why it sucks. <laughs> so I don't know. It's just it's kind of weird. But yeah, not bad. Not bad. Kings to you, Reginald. Kings to uh, you. Thank you, Thompson. Thank you. You're very welcome. We want to give our thoughts, what we're what we're hoping to get out of this film. Uh, I'm hoping to just I, I reading the reviews for this film without being spoiled it seems like this movie might be an underrated gem and maybe wasn't appreciated in its time um but i also read those exact same reviews about dead calm that it's an underrated gem and it wasn't appreciated in its time and then i watched dead calm and i was bored out of my skull throughout most of the movie mm -hmm. so i'm like well now i know why it wasn't appreciated in its time i don't appreciate it now <laughs> it was interesting you know when what? the blonde kid flew through the window yeah that was cool and, and yeah seeing uh uh what's your name's boobs that was kind of neat except i could just google, i could google that and save myself two and a half hours so plus the dude uh chewing on a flare that was there were three good scenes in a two hour of two hour movie uh so yeah. uh but so reginald what do you plan on getting out of this film Dude, my expectations are so fucking low right now. Like, I watch, okay, spoiler alert, I watched maybe five minutes worth of this movie when I was uh, getting the version ready that we're watching. Yeah. Uh, I happened to turn it on, and I just played, like, the opening five minutes. And it was interesting. I'll admit, it was interesting. Very 70s. Like, as in, there was, like, no music in the background. Okay. You know, any music, any movie nowadays has music constantly through the movie. Very mm -hmm. rare. Does a movie not have any uh, music? And this was just like, just the scene where James Earl Jones was being taken to the, the uh, galley. And uh, you just heard the uh, drums going. It was it was interesting. I was intrigued. So the first five minutes had me. And I'm like, I got to shut this shit off. We're going to be watching this. Okay. So I'm interested. But I got to say, I'm not. My expectations are very low. So if I come out of this with a average movie, it will have exceeded my expectations. Like I said before, I've been a little spoiled because I saw the trailer for this. And trailers, as we've known, are made to get you hyped. It's designed to get you into the seat. And it marked me. I have been marked as a rube because it is interesting. For one, you get a young James Earl Jones, which, by the way, look up young James Earl Jones. Holy shit. That man was hot. <laughs> yeah. Oh my um, god! Yeah, he was. He was. I'm, I like they were walking him to the galley, and I'm all like, "You want to get rid of that? Oh my god!" <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking about that. That was that is one thing I wanted. To, I was looking forward to the movie was seeing some of these actors young and in their prime, like Peter Boyle, who I know that we know Peter Boyle as young Frankenstein, but I actually know Peter Boyle more as uh, Ray's dad on Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah, that's so, what I was gonna say. Yeah, I, I know Peter Boyle as much as I love Young Frankenstein, but I, I know Peter Boyle more as an old man. 
So kind of seeing him mm -hmm. younger, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Same with um, um, Genevieve Bojold. I, I, if I said her name wrong, I'm sorry. But yeah, she's uh, the, the, the main female lead in the movie. She was hot in the 70s. Holy shit. And the same with the young Robert Shaw, although I've seen young Robert Shaw because I've seen From Russia with Jaws. Love about a thousand times and, and Jaws, but he's a little bit older in Jaws. But this is this is one year after Jaws or later. Uh, one, yeah, one year after Jaws. Yeah, when so, this movie came out, he was probably filming Jaws. No, uh, he was filming this movie when Jaws came out. Jaws came out in 1975. This movie oh, came out in 1976. Yeah, I, had my, I had the years backwards. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. This movie came out in 1976. Jaws came out in 1975, which probably means Jaws was being filmed in 1974, and this movie was probably being filmed in 1975. Wow, that's that is bizarre overlap. He had two films that were kind of vying to be the return of the blockbuster. Although you never know, this movie could have been one of those movies they filmed in like '73. And they just put it on a shelf because they didn't know when to release it. It's possible. Like I, I don't know. That is pure idle speculation. I have no basis for that. I'm just saying it could have been one of those movies. That's why, he, again, I haven't seen this movie, and it's been so long since I've seen Jaws, I don't remember what Robert Shaw looks like. I guess we'll be able to, once they're watching this one, these back-to-back, -back, we'll be able to be like, okay, which one does he look older in? I, I promise you he looks exactly the same as he does as Quint in Jaws. I think he's got a little more hair in Jaws. Now, Peter Boyle, he just not really look like peter boyle he also looks like he was very poorly miscast maybe could have went with someone else but then again you know what peter boyle he might have been the villainous hotness that that year who's to say i'm looking forward to him not being ray romano's dad in everybody loves raymond though so it's i'm hyped i'm excited i'm probably going to be let down but it's if it if i was born in an age where uh, I would have seen this trailer before a movie or on TV. Yeah, they would have had my five bucks. Yeah. I'm going to try not to be so hard on this movie because it was made in the 70s and not made today. I won't, I won't try to be too hard on the camera work and the acting and some of the other stuff that I would technically judge a, a film by today on. I don't know. I'm cautiously optimistic about this film. Only a few of the reviews on IMDb were like, Oh God, this movie's terrible. Stay away from it. So hoping it's okay, but again, Dead Calm let me down too. Dead Calm had some pretty positive reviews. Like I knew Pathfinder was going to be a disaster. I didn't think Dead Calm was going to be a disaster. I think we were all let down by Dead Calm. Yeah. Yeah, I think we we hit the notes there, guys. Um, do we do want to get uh, Sean Connery back on the line real quick before we uh, dive in? No, we can't afford him anymore. Uh, well, hang on, hang on. I don't think his obligation was fulfilled. I mean, oh. he said it was. But he was supposed to stick with us through the entire film. Okay, okay, yeah, that's. I, I, I don't, I don't. What uh, he? It was your aunt that got him for us, right, Dan? I mean, she was uh, the one who went to like high school with him or some shit like that. Something like that, yeah. Uh, let, let me try seeing if we can get him back in. <clears throat> oh, what the bloody hell is this? Oh, welcome back, sir. Welcome back. So you know, blackmail is illegal in Scotland, right? It's well, not blackmail, sir. It's extortion. Will you please get it right? All right, so no, you. I mean, you worked with uh, Robert Shaw. I mean, what were your thoughts of the guy? I mean, what was what was it like? Have you have you seen this film? I mean, you had to have. You knew him. They say not to speak ill of the dead, and uh, I do like Robbie Shaw. He's a uh, he's fun, but uh, I will say this: I haven't seen this picture, and uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's clear to everyone here, Mister Mister Connery. Like. I'm retired, you know. I just got done smoking, like, a giant fatty doobie. So I'm a little lit right now, if you uh, get my drift. Uh, and that's all the time we have for today, folks. Thank you, Sean, for coming on. Always a classic. Um, Hello, can I make a minor request, please? Uh, it's, um, may, may I do the transition? Yes. Yes, I'm sure there's no way you can make that worse than it is. So yeah, go ahead and do it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I heard it last week. It was uh terrible. Of course, I'm not a huge fan of your show. I only forced myself to listen to it because you know, blackmail, extortion, sir. Please, yeah. thank you. You know, those are the same things. I played a no, writer. We're splitting piece. hairs. Just do the transition, Sean. Now, now listen here. Any <laughs> Tom, uh, go ahead and play the music, please. Now. I'm done. Do not call me again. My obligation is done. I will sue. We promise, Mr. Connery, we won't call. 
again. Thank you for joining. We're absolutely going to call him again. <laughs> if he's stoned, he won't know that he just got off the phone with us. Exactly. Okay. And until then... Don't you have a five-year degree, son? <laughs> You're right, Mr. Connor. I forget sometimes. I'm just in awe of a celebrity right now. I'm retired again. <laughs> and what a time you're making of that retirement from the sounds of it. Oh, you have no idea. I'm, I'm actually getting I'm... in behind the camera on the pornography. It's uh, very interesting. I've got his pseudonym. I'm uh, Stumpy Stan. I don't know why I went with that one. It has a different meaning here in Scotland. Oh, um... look at the time. We need to get things started. <laughs> Welcome back to another High Seas Adventure on the Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and fellow buccaneer, Tom. <clears throat> Thank you for coming aboard as we ride this trade wind on our sink or swim summer tour through Swashbuckler on our way to Jaws. Excitement builds as we near the end of this cruise. In fact, if you listen closely, you can almost hear the telltale cello from here. Or maybe not. Uh, we don't have any ads this week, but you know what? I figure we could take a take a time to peek in and see how our team is doing right now. I have to say, I know we're only like 20 minutes in, but it's not bad right now. It's not, I'm not having those, what have I got myself into thoughts? You're not having one of those, what have I got myself into thoughts yet. Is is this how they entertained themselves? And the... There were no cell phones. There were no video games back then. There was literally nothing to do but say bad limericks. It is 70s Genevieve Bolgeold. I'm surprised she's not naked yet. I think she had it in her contract with Universal. She had to be naked in almost every film. Oh, this is a PG film, so... <laughs> oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> how PG are we talking? I think that's part of the charm of the film, is nobody knows what their accent is. This is a very bizarrely paced film. Yeah. Yes. I just want yeah. to point out that this guy is an expert knife thrower, and he has glasses. Angelica Houston looks bored as we are. Yeah. She is the audience surrogate. <laughs> We've only been watching this movie an hour. It feels like three. <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> well, what is this film? Oh boy, it sounds like they're having a good old time. Woo! If you have thoughts of your own, or comments, or want to put an actual ad in this section, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Figured I'd switch it up a little bit there. Just put in the subject line whether you have a comment, question, recommendation, add, subtract, multiply, or whatever, and we'll give it a read, shove it in a bottle, and toss it out to sea, never to be seen again. We figured we'd try a new system for this this time. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Yeah. I think I hear the captain's bell. Time to set sail again. Uh, thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. Yar. There once was a man with some knives. He walked around and banged all the wives. For once he did please, he fulfilled all their needs, and then they all went about their lives. Thank you, I'm here all night. Could you not be? Okay, my, oh, thank my God. Oh, my God. It's over. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I need just a minute. I'm going to go give me a couple slices of pizza. We're going to do some final thoughts because there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> yes, I'm going to go get a pizza slice of pie, too. We need we need a short break after this, gentlemen. Yeah, oh my I need a drink. Oh, God, do I need a goddamn drink. Yum, yum. It's time for a tasty and refreshing snack. We couldn't wait to watch this movie, no sir. We couldn't think that we were luckier. But it was a trap as the movie was crap. The name of it was Swashbuckler. 
Yeah, how I fit that in with the theme? That's that's that fit better than this film fit. I need a minute, guys. I still need a minute. Fuck me. I think this is the worst film we've watched since Pathfinder. Oh God. For those listening to us right now, if if it's uh this isn't bad editing, it's not that we're on mute. We we need a minute. We're uh we're processing a lot right now. Yes. It's like that movie was bipolar. No. no, it was like omnipolar or I mean it was like it didn't know what it wanted to be from one uh, camera shot to the next. Like you said, Nigel, it's like you switched an angle. It became a whole different kind of film. How many directors were directing this? We still don't know. This could have been a classic case of Robert Shaw being like, no, 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 no. Let's do it this way. I'm Robert Shaw. But no, no, I'm the No, I'm Robert Shaw. This is how it's going to go. But Mr. Shaw, this... None of this dialogue makes sense. And then Peter Boyle comes in. We all no. serve the one true master, Darkness. He's going to say something dark. That's what it needs to be. But I don't, that I don't doesn't, know. it's not in the script, but it works. And I'll make myself Irish. Eh? <laughs> Up the morning to you. But we're three quarters of the way into principal photography. We can't just change it. I don't work, matey. Wait, we're doing accents now. I, James Earl Jones, want an accent too. I'm Jamaican now, man. Nobody gets an accent. Yarb. Oh, God, I picked this film. You did. And I just want to remind you that your film before this one was The Hunt for Red October. You had Sean Connery. You had Robert Shaw. You could have gone to from Russia with Love. We could have watched From Russia with Love tonight. And now you can see why I stopped watching the movie before you got started. <laughs> also, oh, oh also, God, now he's uh, back. Tom, you are uh, quite the dumbass. <laughs> also, I would um, like to point out that tonight I'm wearing my Punisher t-shirt to remind oh, you that if we'd have gone with my list, we'd be watching the Punisher tonight instead of this. But none of us can see the shirt, so the point is just a reminder that we could have been watching the punisher yeah but then we have to watch the punisher at least now i know i hate this movie yeah, I already <laughs> hate the yeah. sometimes you have to experience a thing to learn to hate the thing keep in mind uh, relative to our original expectations tom is disappointed dan is disappointed and even though my expectations were low i am disappointed it's like having sex with myself Yes, this is exactly how it would describe having sex with you, Josh. What are you talking? You're speaking from experience here, Tom. So I think now is a summary section of the film. Let's, uh, so here's the story. We start with James Earl Jones. Why should we start with a whole, like, blah, 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 Jamaica, Peter Boyle's character is evil, yada, yada, who cares? We then go to James Earl Jones being hanged for some crimes. I, I can't remember what they were. I'm sure they seemed important at the time. But I don't think they explained that. No, they didn't. I guess he was bad and they needed to hang him. I don't know. But thankfully, he saved at the last hour by slow-moving pirates and one Robert Shaw in the most god-awfully slow rescue scene ever. And then they do pirate stuff for a while. Uh, but then we get to meet Peter Boyle's character, um, who is the Duke, Lord, in charge of Jamaica. And he's all pissed off that James Earl Jones got saved because we don't know, because no one really tells him. But the guy that lost him uh, gets arrested indefinitely, the, the guard. Uh, and then Peter Boyle decides to fence with a bunch of his um, slaves. Let's just call them what they were, slaves. And they all seem to be a little more upset than sad that he was stabbing and killing them for his... And then uh, his boyfriend gives another dude of the world's creepiest hand job for more reasons. But then we cut for no reason to a bar and a female shows up, Genevieve Bougeau. That's 
that's her name. She sees her brooch on a wench that Robert Shaw is trying to bang, and then she starts a barroom brawl over because it belongs to her dad, who is a guy that is in jail for losing James Earl Jones. And then she's part of the crew for a bit. She just tags along, and then they take her to an island and say, okay, well, you're done. You can leave. But then she picks a fight with Robert Shaw again because reasons, but Robert Shaw beats her and sends her on her way. But then she's with, who was that guy that she met that said, you gotta go to Robert Shaw and hire him to save your dad because he's her cousin. Own, her cousin. Genevieve Bouchot convinces Robert Shaw, you, you do this, I'll pay ya. He joins up and they, they sail some. She swims around naked. Are you as exhausted as I am? Because this is the first hour of this goddamn Dude, film. you're taking way longer and I'm already falling asleep with your summary. Speed it up. <laughs> I, would, I want the audience to get just how frustrating this film was. They try to kidnap or kill Peter Boyle and rather than wait for him to be in a position to kill him, Bujo attacks him, ruins everything, she gets captured, they escape, then they get another crew together, they blow up the prison, save everyone, huzzah, huzzah, and then, oh wait, shit, we forgot to kill Peter Boyle. So they go and they fight Peter Boyle, need the for the longest, most worthless fight scene. And then he dies, and then they it's happily ever after, and we never have to watch this film again. The goddamned end. Oh, is first? he done, Dan? Yeah, I think he's done. Okay. I hope I'm done. I'm done. Oh, I got... Okay, Tom, so uh, what are your um, closing thoughts on this film? I was so excited for this, guys. Whoever made the trailer for this film should be tried for war crimes. <laughs> well, that, honestly, if you got hyped for the film, for this piece of hot garbage, that means that that person deserves a promotion. It's And that's the thing. It was sold to me as like a nostalgia throwback sort of pirate film. But it had no purpose. I'm going to focus primarily on that this director writer wanted to make a nostalgic action-packed pirate film once upon a time sort of thing make a blockbuster like they used to but didn't know how so he just kept throwing things he'd seen in other pirate films the arrow flinning of the sword fights some of the grim darker nature because it's a 70s so try to throw a bit of that in romantic subplot that they never really pay off, and it shows in how it's paced. Again, as Nigel noted, how it's how the cinematography is, the accents, the acting, the dialogue. Someone who had only seen clips of pirate films or been told about pirate films and tried to make them based on that, and that's the film we got. It was an hour and, what, 40 minutes long? It felt like five hours. And I'd never want to talk of this film again. This was... Well, we're going to have to. You guys have to talk about it. But for my side of it, this was right up there with Pathfinder. Because it did not... It promised more than it could ever deliver. Next you know we're going to talk shop. about this a lot, though. I mean, come on. Look, we're still talking about Pathfinder. We're not even talking about the movies we watched around Pathfinder. We talk about the shitty ones. Nigel, you want to go next? Uh, okay. Jaws, From Russia with Love, The Sting, Battle of the Bulge. Robert Shaw is in all of these films, and he is fantastic in all of them. How the hell he is so bad in this movie? I'll never, I can't wrap my brain around it. I mean, Robert Shaw's a good actor. He's brilliant in all the other movies I just listed. And then in this movie, I wanted to see less and less of him as the movie continued. It's one of those movies where, like, I was really pissed this movie's made in the 70s because there's no way the main character is going to die. Because that's not how they made films back then. This film had no idea what it wanted to be. Not from one scene to the next. Not from one hour to the next. From one camera shot to the next. It was... One camera shot is menacing and scary, and the next camera shot is whimsical and funny. It It's frustrating. It's frustrating because you can't get into the film because you can't get into the vibe of the film. So, yeah, this... Uh... Yeah, this movie was really I don't I don't I'm not gonna be as harsh as Tom and say it's Pathfinder bad, but I guess if Pathfinder is a kick in the balls, this is a punch in the teeth, and it's not much better. 
So <laughs> I also am convinced that this movie has there's there's some kind of a rupture in the space time continuum when you're watching this film. Because I swear to God, that rescue scene at the beginning of the movie took two and a half hours. But according to Sync Lounge, it only took uh, less than 10 minutes. And I, I, I'm calling bullshit on that. Because that, that was the slowest rescue I've ever seen in the history of rescue. I, to add to that point, I had to check to make sure maybe I wasn't buffering and, you know, maybe I wasn't lagging. No, that was just slow. Yeah, that was a very slow rescue. Like, they could have hung James Earl Jones's character, cut him down... And then gone and hung someone else in the time it took to rescue him. Like, it was that slow. It's, nothing's happening. What is what is this movie? I was asking it from the, about 30 minutes in. What is this movie? <laughs> and couldn't figure it out. Not one time did, not one time did I get a straight answer. I, I Tom, I want to say, you said it, it felt like a movie where someone described what a pirate movie should be, and they made that. I think that this is more like this person had multiple different pirate movies described to them and tried to make all of them. Pirate comedies, pirate slapstick, pirate heist movies, pirate romance, yo-ho-ho and a bottle of rum type movies, mix in with a little bit of Peter Pan. Yeah, this, this movie was like a combination of every pirate genre ever but they couldn't figure out which one they wanted to do. So they're like, well, we'll just do all of them. This one wanted to be all of those in one camera take. And that's I mostly what I got. Yeah. I know that. You, I think you hit it right on the nose with that one, Nigel. And I'm just going to say it. I, I saw better pirate acting in Hook. <laughs> of course, Hook was a good film. I like it. Was. That. It was. Hook was a great film. God, I wish there was a way we could have connected, you know, <laughs> the last film to Hook. Reginald, I think you're up now. Oh, that's Nigel. You had another thought or two? Uh, I might bounce this in, uh, something off you guys after you guys give your thoughts, but I'd like to hear uh, Josh's here now. Well, um, I got to commiserate with your thought. Why is this movie? <laughs> it uh, <laughs> Seriously, the movie was literally... You had it on the money. This movie felt like... Okay, remember in American Psycho with Christian Bale, specifically William Defoe's character in that movie? Um, I remember reading trivia on that one, that the director, he recorded his interview with Christian Bale's character three different ways. One where he wasn't sure if he did it, one if he was kind of on the fence of whether or not he did it, and the other one where he was convinced he did it. And he would intersplice all three of those reactions into the actual uh, conversation to constantly throw the viewer off. Well, I believe that he got the idea for that from this film... Except they did it the entire fucking movie. Well we done. Got... Well said. Yes. Because, uh, oh my god, all over the place. And like, magic disappearing and reappearing accents. Oh my god, between takes. Like, one second Robert Shaw speaking, next second he's Irish. Where the fuck did that come from? One second, James Earl Jones is Jamaican. Next second, he's suddenly not. And it's like they just, like, oh no, your accent sucks, just drop it. But we're three quarters of the way through principal photography. I, just, I don't care anymore. Just whatever. That's literally what the film felt like. And to talk more about, like, the 40-minute uh, rescue scene, like, I know I mentioned this during the movie, but uh, everything felt like it was the 50th take, and they were literally going through the motions. There was this one point where James Earl Jones went to kick the arm of a guy who was swinging a sword at him. Well, he lifted his leg and kicked about 30 seconds before, and I'm exaggerating, 30 seconds before the guy swung his sword. So the guy ran his arm into James Earl Jones' foot. It was like after watching the video hanging game there. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, the scene where they introduced Robert Shaw's character, was, I imagine this looked good on paper. They all tossed the rope, and then they all climbed the rope up all the way to the very top of the mast, where Robert Shaw was sitting there waiting in the winds to grab it and swing down to save his friend. But by that time, James Earl Jones would have been dead three times over. And that's what wasn't, that was just the opening 10 minutes, or 40 minutes, as, you know, the space-time continuum d is lying to us. The entire movie felt like that. Every single freaking fight scene felt like it was the 50th take, and they were just done for the day. And then acting was just all over the place. I think James Earl Jones had a relatively solid performance between takes. But overall, the movie just was... Like, I went in with very low expectations, and I am disappointed. You know, I just figured it out. In Jaws, <laughs> Robert Shaw, his character Quint, the best scene in that movie, and we'll see it next week, is his monologue about surviving the USS Indianapolis as the men were floating in the water getting picked off by the sharks, one by one by one. I understood the fear and the, the dread in those men's minds 
as I waited for this movie to get to the fucking point. <laughs> but it never did. But it never did. It never did. I never, I never got the sweet release of death. <laughs> yeah. So yes, if you want this to be a cult classic, it's not. If you want to watch this film, don't. If you think that you might enjoy this film because you enjoyed Pirates of the Caribbean, kick yourself in the nuts. Or if you're a woman, I don't know the equivalent. But either way, it's not fun. Find something better to do. Break the sheetrock of your house with your forehead. You'll have a better time. Yeah, this film was just a phenomenal waste of time. Not a waste of time for the podcast. I enjoy watching these movies, even the bad ones, because I do enjoy our reactions, and we're having a lot of laughs with how bad it was. But if I was to sit down and watch this film without the context of this podcast, I'd be so fucking angry while it was over. After it was over. Well, first I would I cry. Even I would, the film, truthfully. Well, first off, I would, have, I would have cried tears of happiness. But I'm, I definitely now understand why I'd never heard of this movie before Tom presented it as part of his list. Like, wow, this is page five of a Google search. <laughs> kind of a <laughs> kind of a find. I mean... Oh, Robert Shaw was in a movie with James Earl Jones? Never uh, heard of that. Next. <laughs> I felt like Angelica Houston's character, just waiting for it to end. Yeah, she was Dude. definitely collecting a paycheck. <laughs> I had another thought, but I'm just, I'm wiped. I think after this is over, I'm going to queue up from Russia with Love so I can watch Robert Shaw in a good film. That would be a good palate cleanse. And to secretly be pissed off at Tom that he didn't choose that movie. In my defense, John Connery had it right. I mean, he said there's water in it. We could have done it. I blame well, Tom. Well, Sean Connery wasn't there five weeks ago when I pitched this path. You all picked this. We it's, all could have went with dance, but you said, no, Tom's is thematically correct. Let's give Tom's a chance. To be fair, to in be foresight, fair. You're, uh, you had a good list. It's just actually after watching the list... We now realize, in hindsight, it was not a good list. <laughs> it's not a good list in terms of movies, but it's a good list in terms of entertainment. We've gotten a lot of entertainment out of every one of these movies we watched. Yes, this is not, true. Not from the movies themselves, but from our reactions and from our discussions and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, say what you will about this film. We were talking about it. We were paying attention to it. Yeah, so. I just, um, this movie, I, I can see why it flopped. It's so hard to follow, because I don't know what the hell's going on. Like, it definitely I, I, needed a better editor. Like, I think editing could have at least made it a salvageable film. Yeah, shave down at least 20% of things, reorganize them. Yeah. Just reorganize. That's... They changed the pacing. You know, it's too slow at first, like, how long is the movie? Hour and 40 minutes? It's too slow for the first hour and 20 minutes. And even yeah. then, it only picks up for about five minutes. Yeah, we don't get introduced to Peter Boyle's character for, like, almost a half hour, right? At least it felt that way. And he's supposed to be the guy that you want to beat. And there's no connection to any of them. I, he's an asshole and he's a dick, but I don't feel like... I didn't care. I didn't care about that. It didn't earn your hatred. Yeah. You, you made it clear he's a creep, he's a jerk, he's a monster, and he should die, and you're going to be glad when he dies. I was just glad when it was over. Yeah, I was I was happy when he died because I had, that meant the movie was about to end. And that's, that's not what you want from your audience. And it was one of the most pointless, pointless, drawn-out, stupid sword fights I've ever seen. And I'm not meaning the the flinning in the sword fight. I, I I don't care that it's not realistic. It's just it's a pointlessly stupid sword fight. He has him beat at the end, and he's like, oh well, no, uh, give him another sword so he can keep fighting me. Well, Why? At least Earl Jones was smart enough to be like, yeah, fuck that. I'm putting my sword away. Yeah, yeah. Said, yeah. yeah James Earl Jones was the best character in this whole film because he only he's the only one that acts like an actual pirate. It's like, no, we ditch this chick, and or no, we kill these people, we get out. Fuck this. Like, no. give the guy a sword to fight with honor? Fuck no, we're pirates! Ugh, oh, this movie. Why is this movie? What is this movie? I'm going to ask that question probably until the end of time now. What probably. is this movie? The deep philosophy, Nigel. Well, it's uh. deeper philosophy than anything this movie presented. You know what? I think I got the answer for you, Nigel. This okay. movie is unfulfilled potential. 
it had the opportunity and it had every possible opening to be a good film. The trailer, like Tom even admitted, it sold him. The opening scene, up until it got dumb with about 30 seconds in, it has sold for me. I, and uh, you even mentioned that you watched some of the film and you got you. It's like unfulfilled potential. That's all this movie is. It's like we think that it could be good. We build it up in our head and we are ultimately let down. Mm. Kind of like my wife. No one here is going to argue any of those points there, Josh. Um, <laughs> I, I just I don't understand this movie. I don't. I'm so lost. This movie's been over now for like 30 minutes. I'm still fucking lost. I think the uh, analogy, you watch a movie you've never seen and you just turn it on for background noise and then you keep coming back to it, but you have no idea what's going on, but you watch it just because for the sake of background noise and then you you, you just don't know what the, the movie's over, but you're like, I have no idea what the hell's going on, but whatever, it was background noise. That's what we felt like watching the movie and paying attention to it the entire yeah. time. Yeah. It, yeah. It's been a long time since I've seen a movie this discombobulated where it's like, it just feels like it doesn't know what the hell it wants to do. You know, yeah, I mean, I, how long has it been since we've seen any Transformers movie? <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm what? Maybe, maybe, this, maybe this movie gave me another concussion. I don't know. I've just seen, I've never seen two hours of nothing. The only other film that I feel like was about as chopped up, if not more, was the remake of Wolfman with Benicio Del Toro. That one was a mess of a film. This one was better put together than that, but it's it's about comparable. It but would have... was the first launch of the movie ver- or the monster verse, wasn't it? No, that was way before any no, of that. That was supposed to be the first well, one. No, that was supposed to be the first one, and then Dracula Untold was supposed to be the next one. Was supposed to be the next, and that didn't work. And then the Mummy remake was going to be their new launching point for the Dark Verse. And then they now they don't know. Yeah, now they don't. They don't know what they're doing. I don't really? think they're doing. I think it's just done. Smart move on their part. Honestly, now that I think about it, this film might have worked better as like chopped up into parts on TV. Maybe it could have worked better that way because it felt like it. It's like this was the end of part one. Here's the end of part two. <sighs> no. No, audience, if you want to watch it, go ahead. But no, I don't even think it would have worked in that thing. I just honestly, the, it, making it into a TV show would be like plucking your pubes. You know, like I, I'm just going to go ahead and say that it, it, get it over with. Like, watching it as a movie is like waxing your, pu- your your balls. Just get it over with, dude. Just get it over with. Or or don't do it. Just you don't. Could shave. You could just shave. You could just shave. Might not be as close, might not be as well groomed, but uh, you know, it's not this movie, so just don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. Yeah. If this movie was a, a had a logo, it'd be an upside down Nike swoosh. Don't do it. Yeah. Or just Dan with his hands out, shaking his head. No, no. Yeah. No. Swashbuckler, just don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. But we actually, you know what? I I can say this. I just 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 came to me. This movie is definitely a throwback. Jaws was the start of the blockbuster genre. About uh, the Jaws was the start of the summer blockbusters. This movie, one year later, is kind of a throwback to that era before Jaws. But the mm-hmm. movie that comes out one year after this one, Star Wars, is the one that solidifies the new Hollywood. Jaws was the start of new Hollywood. This is still a hanger on of old Hollywood. And then Star Wars is the first floor of new Hollywood. Like, so this... what you're saying is this film is 2009 of the MCU. Yeah. Cause like 2008 was the first year of MCU. There was no films in 2009. And then every year since that, we've had at least one Marvel movie. It, it, it is. It's, it's just kind of a holdover of a era that's passing it by. I'd almost liken it to the wrestling match. We have the old big star from the days, like the Hogan, and they're fighting the the new hotness, the new generation, and it's a passing of the torch. This this is old Hollywood now. They're doing their job for new Hollywood and letting Jaws win so we can have Star Wars eventually. But let's go to Jaws first, because Jaws... Yeah, I want to get to Jaws first. I'm just saying that this movie feels like that weird gap between mm. old Hollywood and new Hollywood, because Jaws is the start of new Hollywood. Yes, you know. and boy, oh boy, what a start. Yeah. But we, we want to thank you all for listening <laughs> to us today. Um, as we... 
what do you call the swim to the sank. shore? We sank tonight. We definitely sank. <laughs> but thankfully, Robert Shaw was able to save us, and he's taking us to Jaws next. Sixteen, what, seventeen episodes in, and I've got to say, as rough as these seas have been, it's still been good. So yeah. we're going to Jaws next week, guys, and I can't wait for it. Well, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I hope you look forward to joining us next week where we watch Jaws. Special shout out to Sync Lounge once again and uh, Plex. And I hope you join us next week for uh, the culmination and climax of uh, the Sink or Swim Summer Tour. And just remember, please, to download us on Podbean at firepit.podbean.com. We're also located on iTunes and Spotify. And uh, are we on Amazon now, aren't we? And Google Podcasts. Oh, Amazon and Google Podcasts. So almost anywhere you can get podcasts, we are there. So please download, listen to the show really helps us out. We enjoy it and we really like making this for you. So join us next we week. We love attention. We do. We love attention. Mostly Josh. Josh really loves attention. I do. I do. And But yeah, this has been another episode of the fire pit. And again, join us next week. And you know, to all you bots and listeners uh, who have been out there, thank you for sticking with us. Special um, shout out to Peggy, friend of the channel. Best friend of the that. channel. <laughs> yeah, special okay, shout out to Peggy. Haven't shout out Peggy yet. Come on, we haven't done it yet. Hi, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Peggy, friend of the channel. And I'm glad we're, you're recovering. All... She's recovering very nicely from her operation. So we're all in recovery mode right now. We're we're right there with you, Peggy. Yeah, we just had major surgery, and this is going to take us a couple weeks to get over too. Not to make light of your situation, but I'm making yes. light of your situation. <laughs> Not we love you, Peggy. You're awesome. Thank you for listening. And thank you, everyone, for listening. I've been Tom. I've been Josh. And I've been Dan. And this has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Thank you for listening. Good luck out there. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to go and uh, cry in the shower while still fully clothed. So. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of hoping that... Uh, Sean Connery would show back up and rub it in your face that we had to watch this film. Yeah, you know. He tried, he but we kind of was crying and he left. Like, should have watched uh, my movie. <laughs> Thank you for joining, Sean. Please don't ever come back. <laughs> uh, I do hope we get to a Bond movie or two during this podcast. We oh, could we have. <laughs> Tom has left the call. <laughs> just, just, just pops up on our Skype. Tom has left the call. 